An avalanche starts with a snowflake. My name is Kylie Drever, and I was raised in a cult for the first decade of my life. This meant no TV, no radio, no pets, no birthday parties with worldly friends, and I got to dress like this. But it wasn't all bad since I developed a very, imagine, very active imagination. And with that imagination came an insatiable curiosity. And even though as a member of said cult, I likely wasn't going to high school, let alone university, I still loved school. It was a place of endless learning and answers for my endless questions, much to the dismay of both my fellow students and my teachers. School is where the first snowflakes fell for me. In Mrs. Godwin's grade eight class, we took a field trip to what we called the Badlands to look at different rock formations. Mrs. Godwin says that all of my other classmates had long since given up staring at rocks and they took advantage of the nice weather to play. Instead, there was me with her husband, one of the supervisors. We had our noses buried in the dirt, searching for the KT boundary, as it was known at the time, a line of white sediment marking a mass extinction event. Mrs. Godwin was certain that I was a scientist long before I ever considered it myself. Thankfully, by that time, my family had left the cult and university was a very real possibility for me. In high school, more snowflakes fell in the form of Ms. Brady and Mr. Ford, who directed my sense of curiosity to chemistry and biology. I did end up going to university, obviously, but I went in hopes of becoming a dentist. But at some point during my undergrad, Dr. Rathgeber at the University of Manitoba maybe unknowingly directed my career to microbiology instead of teeth. Finally, it was right here at the U of S under the supervision of Dr. Jeffrey Chen, where I received my PhD in veterinary microbiology. Turns out Mrs. Godwin was right about my future as a scientist all the way back in grade eight. I spent the last six years of my life studying tuberculosis, or TB as it is often called, a disease caused by a bacteria known as Mycobacterium tuberculosis. TB is an ancient plague that's affected humankind for close to 70,000 years. Moreover, many of us probably had a grandparent or another family member who went off to a world war, and if they returned, they often returned with TB, as was the case for these veterans here. And sanatoriums were the number one treatment form and isolation building for TB patients. This is the Saskatoon Sanatorium. However, it was torn down ages ago, because if you were born in the last two or three decades, you kind of assume nobody gets sick of TB anymore. I mean, if someone coughs near me, I think you have a cold. I don't think you have tuberculosis. But until I started studying TB, I didn't know how ignorant I was to the realities of modern TB. Both of these gentlemen live with active tuberculosis and can attest to the very real threat TB remains for millions, if not billions of people around the world. I want to better illustrate to you how serious TB is. There are 100 people in this room and let's say together you represent the population of the world. If that's true, 25 of you have tuberculosis. Lucky for you, the bacteria that causes TB is a very patient bacteria. So 22 of you have latent infection. This means the bacteria is alive and well in your lungs, but your immune system has contained it, so you're not sick or contagious to those around you. However, that can change with time. 
the remaining three of you have active tuberculosis, likely due to being immunocompromised. This could be because you're older or maybe you have an illness that causes you to have a weaker immune system. Or maybe you're just plain unlucky. Unfortunately, this means you are contagious to everyone around you. Now, during my 12 minute talk, the three contagious individuals will take on average 16 breaths per minute for a total of 576 exhales. Each exhale can carry about 70 cells of TB bacteria. So, over the course of my talk, they have now exhaled 40,000 or so TB cells. That's about 538 cells per uninfected individual in this room. And you only need 10 cells to infect you. How safe are you all feeling right now? <laughs> Luckily, TB is treatable through chemotherapy. Still, for those of you with drug-sensitive TB, you can look forward to six to nine months of four drugs that cause side effects such as liver inflammation, nerve damage, rashes, and probably reversible vision loss. For those of you with drug-resistant TB, you'll need to add additional drugs that will add kidney damage, hearing loss, and mental side effects included, but not limited to, depression, paranoia, and suicidal thoughts. And you have to take these drugs for two years, some of which have to be injected on a regular basis, all to make sure that you clear the disease. And even if you're diligent, you will never develop immunity to TB, so it can come back at any time. But wait, isn't there a vaccine? Yeah, there is. It was developed over 100 years ago and is the most administered vaccine in newborn babies around the world. Unfortunately, the older you get, the less effective it becomes. And no, a booster does not help. Thanks to TB being very good at its job of infecting us, scientists have never been able to develop a vaccine that beats that century old one. And yet somehow we still feel safe. In 2021, for the first time, $1 billion worldwide was allocated for TB research. Canada alone put more than that towards COVID-19 research the previous year. That's not to say that that money should not have been allocated towards the pandemic, but I do believe it illustrates that we have the ability to pour money and resources into areas of research that we perceive to affect us and ignore those that don't. And unless you are part of Northern or Indigenous communities, we are privileged in Canada to be able to ignore TB for now. Our world is more connected than ever. Social media allows you to connect with someone a continent away. And you could be best friends and never meet each other face to face. However, we are connected in other ways, ways that allow disease to travel quite quickly. There are 100,000 flights every single day carrying more than 6 million passengers. And you think that TB or something worse won't be knocking at your door? Every single year, more than 10 million people get the news that they are TB positive. Every single year, more than 1.5 million people lose their lives to TB. Our only vaccine celebrated its 100th birthday years ago. Our first line of antibiotics was developed when my grandma was young. And it was horror worldwide when COVID hit 1 million deaths. But for TB, we would celebrate only 1 million deaths this year. Why the disconnect? I think it's because the grand we gets to turn a blind eye to it. But billions of people around the world don't have that same luxury, but we can change that. We proved during the worldwide lockdown that we can work together for the greater good. 
Do you remember the ALS ice bucket challenge back in 2014? We dumped buckets of ice water on our head, we filmed it, we posted it to Facebook, and tasked three others to do the same. Money raised from that seemingly silly social media challenge funded a new drug to treat ALS, and it was FDA approved just last year. We have the power. You all have the power. Find something that you care about. Even if it's not TB, there's thousands of organizations out there that can use what you have. Maybe it's your money, maybe it's your time, your ideas, your social media influence, your voice, and so much more. An avalanche starts with a snowflake. Likewise, solutions start with ideas. Maybe mine, maybe yours, maybe my research will one day make TB a disease of the past. I'll never know if I don't try, and neither will you. Thank you.